sodium fluoride. I highlighted the metal in light blue and the non-metal yellow. And I'm identifying the cation as sodium and the anion as fluorine, or fluoride, I should say. And I'm dissecting the formula by noticing that the sodium is a positive one charge on it, and the fluoride has a negative one charge on it. And when these charges are summed up, equals zero. Next, sodium chloride, very similar. Why is that? Well, we have sodium as before, but chloride is also a halogen, group 7A. So it's negative 1. Positive 1, negative 1 equals 0. No Roman numeral is needed in these names so far because sodium is not a transition metal. Magnesium fluoride. Magnesium is a group 2A metal, so it's a positive 2 charge. And notice very carefully, I highlighted only the fluoride and not the 2. The 2 simply means that there are two fluoride ions. And if I want to dissect the formula, I put a 2 in front of the fluoride ion. So two fluorides contribute two negative 1 charges, which is negative 2 total. The one magnesium is positive 2 contributes a positive 2, and the total charges sum up to 0. Iron oxide. Hmm, as mentioned before, iron has two charge states, iron 2 and iron 3. By looking at the formula, you could determine that this is iron 2. Why is that? Well, think, think about it step by step. Oxide is always negative 2, and there's one of them in the formula. There's one iron, and the sum of the charges must sum up to 0. So this guaranteed negative 2 must be added to positive 2 to get 0. Therefore, this must be iron 2. I'll remind you again that the Roman numeral has to do with the charge on the metal ion. That Roman numeral has nothing to do with the formula directly. Here's Fe2O3. Approach it the same way. Oxide is negative 2. There's three oxides. So the total charge contribution from the anion is negative 6. There, according to the formula, there are two irons, and each of those irons must have a positive 3 charge in order for the math to work out. So two positive 3s contributes a total of positive 6, therefore it's iron 3 oxide. This is copper 2 oxide. And let's examine why this is copper 2 oxide. For the same reason, that FeO was iron 2 oxide. 1 oxide, negative 2, 1 copper, that means that copper, single copper, must contribute a positive 2 charge. Cu2O, okay. this is copper 1 oxide. Oxide still negative 2. In order for this to work out, the two coppers included in this formula each must have a positive one charge. Two positive ones make a positive two with that negative two from the oxide sum up to zero. So this is copper one oxide. And I'll remind you again, the Roman numeral has nothing to do with the formula subscripts. A common mistake is to call this formula copper 2 oxide simply because of the subscript 2. Cobalt 4 oxide. Well, let's verify it's cobalt 4. Oxide is negative 2. There's two of them. That contributes a total of negative 4. 
There's one cobalt according to the formula. Therefore, that one cobalt must contribute a positive 4 to make sure the sum of the charges equals 0. Lead sulfate. This is our first formula that includes a polyatomic anion. I'm going to emphasize where the metal is and where the non-metal polyatomic anion is. So I'm identifying the cation as lead and the anion as sulfate. A common mistake is to take the SO4 and break it apart into something like sulfur tetroxide or something really interesting. You have to get used to, number one, identifying it as an ionic compound, metal, non-metal. Once you've done that, identify the cation, which is lead, and the anion, in this case, is SO4 as a group, SO4 2 minus, if you look at a polyatomic ion list. This is lead 2 because there's one sulfate, which is negative 2, therefore the lead must be positive 2. And lead is located in the periodic table as a main group metal. It is not a transition metal or an inner transition metal, but it's a main group metal and it does need a Roman numeral included after the name. Lead also comes in the plus 4 charge state. This is lead 4 chloride. <clears throat> we could determine that it's lead 4 because there's 4 chloride anions. Chloride is always negative 1. The total contribution from the anions, or from the negative part of the formula, is negative 4. There's one lead according to the formula, so that lead must have a positive 4. Here's gold chloride. This is gold 1 chloride. It's gold 1 because there's one chloride, as we've seen already numerous times. Chloride is always negative 1. The formula lists one gold, so the gold must be in the plus 1 state. Here's a formula where gold is in the plus 3 state. And here's another formula where there's a polyatomic anion, phosphate. Again, a common mistake is to look at this formula and see the metal, but then break apart the PO4 and call it something like phosphorus tetroxide or something else that's not correct. Get used to looking for the metal, and if you see more than one non-metal following that metal, look for a polyatomic ion. Go to your list and look for a polyatomic ion that matches up. In this case, PO4 is phosphate, and the charge on the PO4 group is negative 3. Now, let's understand that that negative 3 charge does not, or is not directed to the 4 oxygens or the 1 phosphorus. That negative 3 charge applies to the entire group of five atoms, the PO4, one phosphorus, four oxygens. So this has to be gold three because there's one gold and the phosphate is negative three. Ammonium chloride is the next example. Here's another formula where there's a polyatomic ion, but in this case it's a polyatomic cation. And this is the one exception to the metal non-metal rule. And I highlighted NH4 in blue just to point out that it is the cation. So NH4 as a little group of atoms has a plus one charge and the chloride is negative one as we've seen already so we add them up and it's zero. The next example as NH4 in parentheses with a 3 in the subscript position. And there's one phosphate. So this is ammonium phosphate. And that subscript 3 outside the parentheses means that there's three ammonium polyatomic ions. And there's a, there's a reason why I only highlighted NH4 and not the 3. That 3 simply means that there's three of them. So 
three positive ones contributes positive three and there's a little typo here I just noticed that should be negative three and that one phosphate is negative three nickel oxide nickel is a transition metal but there's no Roman numeral included in the name that's because nickel was one of the common uh, transition metals that you'll run into that do not require a Roman numeral that's because nickel does not exist in more than one charge state. Nickel exists primarily as positive 2.